this is the Prozine Chernobyl Desktop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up an Illustrator file for use in Adobe After Effects. So today we're going to be using, um, we're going to be going through the steps of setting up an Illustrator file to animate from start to finish. Uh, we're going to be getting a free for use file from a graphics site, organizing it with an Illustrator so it's easy to animate in After Effects, and then importing it back into After Effects, uh, sorry, importing it back into After Effects itself. After animating that, we're going to finish up with some live text animation as well. So let me show you what the project looks like. So this is what it, it looks like when it's done. And we're going to be mainly focusing on like this Ferris wheel portion uh, with this bit of text to give you an idea of how to do this yourself. There's a, a couple of, you know, um, animations going on in the back. We're not going to worry about that. That's just to add some uh, flair to the, the file. But they're, they're made exactly the same way as this process. So once you know how to do this Ferris wheel, you could do everything else by yourself. So this is a very useful thing to know as a designer because you're going to be getting files from other sources all the time. Whether it's from a team member or for a freelance job, motion graphics artists have to deal with outside files a ton. And for After Effects, there's a particular way to set up a file so that it animates correctly and neatly. So while this tutorial is going to show you how to download, set up, and animate an Illustrator file, I actually, as I mentioned, I have a background animated already, so you can focus on setting up just this Ferris wheel in the text. So that's going to be an already set up um, Illustrator file. Um, and that stuff's linked below in the description. All right, so let's head over. I'm going to show you a couple of sites where you can get a free vector. So one such site is FreePick, F-R-E-E-P-I-K. Um, and if you put in resources like free and vectors, let's see, I don't know, let's put in dog. Um, you'll see that they have all these super cute, uh, free, you know, files for your, for your uh, personal project. Um, a lot of these places will want you to give credit, like put a link to the site where you got it from. That's very important. Uh, please give credit whenever you are using an online asset. Um, so this is VecDeasy, so that's how you get from there, and the site we're going to, uh, sorry about that, that's free pick. The next site we're using is VecDeasy, V-E-C-T-E-E-Z-Y, um, same thing here, vectors, let's also put in dog, you know, they have a different, just dog please, thank you. Um, and over here we'll put in free license, again, you, you don't have to pay anything for these, but you do have to give credit when you use these assets. So for our purposes, we're going to be using this file, the amusement park uh, file. So you can see attribution required, free download, um, you know, copy the link to post it somewhere in the description of your project, you know, so you can give credit and we hit free license and it's going to download as a zip and then you just extract it and open it up in Illustrator. So I will see you over there. All right, here we are in Illustrator. So, um, a couple of things first before we get into it, but this should be, let me check what kind of file. Oh, so this is an Illustrator file. You can see that it's AI, um, but very often when you are uh, downloading a file from the internet, a vector file can be an EPS. It's not a big deal, but the difference between these files is that an EPS, an encapsulated postscript, it's, um, it's an older, larger, more flexible kind of file. Uh, you see it a lot in publishing. Um, you can use this like laser cutters. Um, both these can carry bitmap info as well, kind of like a, a you know a pixel, uh, like a photo, anything in Photoshop. Um, so these guys both carry illustrations. Um, Adobe Illustrator files, the AI files, they're usually used for logos, and that's the native file format for um, Illustrator. So now you know. But this one's already in Illustrator, so. If you do want to convert it from one to the other, you uh, go to uh, Save As, and then um, you know Adobe Illustrator or Illustrator EPS that will do the trick. Um, all right, so let's pick apart this file. So the first thing I'm going to do for my purposes, I don't need this uh, background layer, so I'm going to unlock that thing. I'm going to delete it. Um, I don't need this layer, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, and the other ones as well, um, I'm actually going to be getting rid of just because we're really focusing, as I mentioned, on the Ferris wheel. So, all right, so what we're going to be doing next is that this thing, if you click on it, you see the whole thing highlights. 
but if you toggle it open, there's all these pieces. That means this is already grouped. So if that's the case, go up to Object, Ungroup. So now it's got all these sub sub pieces, right? And if I click on those, now it's all separate. But I want all of these under separate layers. That's super important if you're going to be uh, animating it in After Effects, because After Effects can't parse through the layers itself. It can't separate it itself. So we're going to go up again with this layer selected, go up to this little hamburger, hamburger icon, go to Release to Layer Sequence, and now they all have their own little sub layers. So Let's grab every single one of these layers, click and drag it on top of that main layer, and now they're all released. It does give us this leftover layer over here, so we're going to delete that. Okay, so that's all done. Um, so now we're going to be saving this file, I'm doing shift Control s on my PC, and I am going to find the, um, the folder where my After Effects uh, project is contained. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to quickly and effectively access this file whenever I want. Now, if I save it somewhere else, After Effects is going to know where it is when I import it. But if something happens to it, I want to be able to like quickly relocate it. Um, and it's just, you know, if you're packaging this file, sending it off to someone else working on a team, it's really best practice to have all your assets in one area. So here we go. I'm saving it as an Illustrator file. Yes, yes, yes. And now we can head into After Effects. So this is the demo uh, file. Let's head into the file we're going to be using. So you see it's blank. There's no words. There's no Ferris wheel. Now a couple of things. So we are going to be importing with um, Control I on a PC, Command I on a Mac. And let me tell you about your different options when uh, importing your files. So we put it in using AI files, assets, thank you. Ferris wheel, all right. So I'm gonna do this the wrong way first for this particular method. We're gonna import it. You see the setting code over here? We're gonna go over these settings. So footage imports it as one uh, layer, merge layer, see? Now really you want footage if you're doing like a sequential animation, um, like a bunch of pictures all together, or literally footage. Um, ooh, this is came in kind of big, but you see, like it's massive. And if I want to rotate it, it just the whole thing rotates. I don't want that. So for this option, footage is not the best. Um, all right. So let me show you the other two. So the one we're going to be using is composition retain layer sizes because the um, regular one uh, composition that puts the anchor point, the um, the point that the uh, program has like to animate the object around, um, that puts it in the center of the file for every single layer. And it's really more useful for symmetrical pieces or if you're working with a work in progress graphic. Like it's useful for animating with earlier stage files and standard artwork, but we're going to be using composition retain layer sizes, and that's the most common option that people use. I always use it. So let's drag and drop it into here. I'm going to scale it down so it fits. Let's see. I'm going to move my anchor point with Y to the base over here. Let's scale it just how I want it. All right, so now let's get to the nitty gritty. I'm going to double click to go inside of my Ferris wheel layer and here it is in the top right corner. So we've got all these layer names. What I'm going to be doing for uh, neatness sake is I'm going to hit enter on my PC, return on a Mac, and I'm going to be naming each of these. So I'm just going to go down the row and do that with every single one so I know what all the pieces are. So let's cut to that. All right, so with all these selected, um, if you don't have this plugin, it's pretty easy to get, but you could just hit Y on your keyboard and drag all the anchor points to the top middle of all the cars, like that, so they look like that. And I'm gonna be animating our outside ring here. I'm gonna get my plate at the origin, hit R with outside ring selected. The outside ring being like this uh, red, you know, outside ring. So I'm going to hit the, the stopwatch to start keyframing. I'm going to move it uh, like two seconds in 
And I'm gonna put one over here, which will tell it to do one entire revolution. And if I play it, you'll see that the, um, like the cars, oh, sorry about that. What I meant to do first was that I was gonna select all these cars and I want to pick whip that swirly, swirly thing. You grab on any selected uh, layer, grab, um, drag it over to outside ring. There we go, please behave. And if you get this thing playing, you'll see they all rotate as well, which is not typical Ferris wheel behavior, um, unless you've been on some real exciting Ferris wheels. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making sure that they all like stay upright while they rotate. So I'm going to have on car one, I'm going to open up rotation by hitting R with it selected. And I have a PC, so I hit Alt. If you have a Mac, you would probably be hitting, you'd be hitting the option key. But over here in expressions, I'm going to be typing in just a little bit of code, very small. I'm going to do semicolon value um, and then this like hyphen and then parent dot rotation dot value. And what that's going to do, it's that going to it's going to keep this car upright. All right. So with that in place, we're going to be going up to um, you have to have the rotation like highlighted here. It's very picky. We go up to edit, copy expression only, and then you just, you know, paste it with command V, control V into every single uh, car layer. You can see in rotation, uh, once it turns red, that means it's got an expression added. So six, seven, eight. And also another expression we're gonna be adding is heading over to the rotation on the outside ring. Um, and we're gonna be putting in loop out. So that was just going to make this continue on forever and ever. Now you'll see that like the cars look a little bit funky once they start rotating out of place. Um, that more has to do with their own individual anchor points. What I would suggest in that case is to go through each of these cars and if they're looking kind of weird when they uh, rotate, um, I would suggest like altering the anchor point. So like playing with the anchor point to get it just so where it uh, you know, rotates uh, correctly. All right, with that done, we head back to our main comp and it's rotating. A little bit off, but you know, you could, like I said, you could always alter those little cars afterwards, you know, with the anchor point in the position, but you got the general idea. It's just a little bit of detailing from here on out. Um, all right, so the last thing that we're going to be doing is I want to show the difference between live text and importing text from um, Illustrator. So let's see, I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call it uh, Ferris wheel text. And I am just going to type something in here. Let's make that nice and big. Something in here. Reason being, now there's a difference between importing the text directly to After Effects and um, just copy pasting it. And that has to do with something called live text. Now live text is editable, but if you import this, it will probably come in as an object, which is not editable in the same way. So check this out. I'm going to save it, Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel text, yes please. I'm going to import it. I'm going to import it as composition, retain layer sizes, and drag and drop it onto here. Now if you'll you see, I can't really animate it in the same way I can do uh, text itself. I can really just animate it as if it were a, um, you know, an object, which is not really what you want with text, generally speaking. The, the better thing to do is to, let's say, let's go back into After Effects. Let's move that out of the way, new layer, and text. I happen to have this text like saved, so I just paste it over there, but you type in anything. Now it's an After Effects. Now what I would rather do here to make sure that I can edit it is actually copy it, uh, Control C, Command C, and I'm gonna make a layer, new text layer, and I'm gonna paste it in right like that. 
And the reason being is because I actually want this to be uh, anim like I want to animate this in the same way that I can animate any other text in my uh, file. So I'm going to go to effects presets. I am going to do um, my text uh, text presets. Let's head over there. Animate in. Uh, fade up and flip. Like that. I'm actually going to grab the a little range here but yeah you see I wouldn't be able to do that if I had imported the text like I had done before so yeah this workflow happens a lot designers get handed logo files with all the pieces stuck together in one layer or we'll have to animate a car for instance and that's also just drawn up all together in a single layer sometimes we'll be tasked with a general animated jungle scene and we'll have to go digging for a free file that has those assets and then set it up so we could work with it all this kind of workflow is also super useful to know if you're making your own Illustrator assets too. Now you're going to be familiar with how to best sub your layers in, in AI so AE can animate them without hassle. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to set up an Illustrator file for animating in Adobe After Effects. This has been Sipar Designs for Noble Desktop.